Welcome back to Pricing Decisions. This is topic three, target costing and pricing. Adopting a target pricing mod model requires a target costing endeavor. Once a target price is known, it is up to the business to determine how much income they would like to earn and then target the product's costs to arrive at a figure that allows the income level. Companies can look towards competitors and their cost structures to determine what is standard or what is appropriate. Otherwise, they risk overspending and creating a cost structure that they cannot match the prices of a competitor. Interesting. So I like to think of this one as reverse engineering. So first, you figure out what, step one, determine what product will best serve the customer's need, and then find out a price, a target price, that the market will support. Then figure out how much profit you would like to make, what is feasible given your uh, positioning within the market. Then figure out what your total pool of costs can be and then reverse really engineer to see what kind of um, inputs that you can get in order to make um, this whole endeavor feasible. So if I were to give kind of a lay example, it would be, um, hmm, <laughs> What if we were looking at some sort of food? Maybe we are looking at cotton candy, sure. Cotton candy, it's back, it's the mid 90s, it is back. Or maybe we're looking at, let's do snow cones. So snow cones, we have, we need the ice, we need the machine to you know, chop up the ice, and then we need the syrup to squirt on the ice and hand out. We also likely need the cones. Um, so you look and there is, only one other competitor in town. They are using paper cones. They have a 16 year old, no shade on 16 year olds, but they have a 16 year old that's you know doing the ice shaving um, and you know doing the squirting of um, all the goods that comes out of just um, a, like a little plastic container. So what I'm going for here is I'm trying to set the stage that this is kind of the budget snow cone. So you are like, wow, they are selling each one of those snow cones for like five bucks and you look and it's probably costing them like all of 30 cents to make because it's cheap plastic, cheap ice, cheap labor, and cheap um, direct materials uh, from that syrup that's being um, put on top of the shaved ice. So you are like, hmm, I bet that if we came in, um, we could charge $7.00 and 50 cents for a premium snow cone, maybe even $8, $8 for a premium snow cone. And you're like, okay, um, I wanna make at least $1.50 per snow cone. So that means that you have $6.50 to support your direct materials, support your direct labor, and support your manufacturing overhead. Okay, so you figure out all of this and you find out um, that you are going to, you know, you're going to run this yourself, um, but you're going to make sure that you pay yourself a living wage. So you're going to look at, I don't know, $25 per hour. You are going to invest in some, I don't know, biodegradable uh, snow cone sleeves uh, and really, you know, speak to that uh, environmentally conscious user. You are going to use um, you know, syrup that comes from a premium Italian supplier that uses all biodegradable containers uh, for their products and services. Instead of calling it shaved ice, I don't know, you call it premium Italian uh, <laughs> frozen water. I don't really know, but you're cut, you get the gist that I'm going for. And you figure out if you can get all of those inputs, those premium inputs, um, in order to kind of support where you get all of those uh, inputs down to $6.50, because if you do, then you can um, tack on your uh, profit of $1.50, selling your, to your snow cone for $8, and therefore positioning yourself um, utilizing the target pricing strategy model. Let's look at an illustrative example, going a little bit slower, step by step. Okay, we have Acme Corp, and they have decided to enter the market for HB pencils. They are following the target-based product model as follows. The step one, which is determine which product will best meet customer needs. They've determined that the standard HB pencil with the small erasers on the end are best. Now let's look at a target price. 
Each pencil in the market is sold for no more than 30 cents per pencil, and the company aims to sell 1 million pencils for total revenue of $300,000. Number three, select a target operating income per unit and subtract it from the price up above and number two, to determine the maximum cost per unit, that is our target cost per unit. Acme would like income per unit of four cents. So the target cost per unit would be 30 cents less four cents, that is 26 cents per pencil. This would lead us to have a target operating income of $3,600. Gyuch, sorry, I'm just looking at this. Could you imagine? selling $300,000 worth of pencils only to get $3,600 in a target operating income. That is a lot of pencils for not a lot of money, but you know, that's part of their strategy. They're going to try going off of volume. Step four, in, um, Acme then engages in, needs to engage in cost analysis to determine the needed costs. So Acme will uh, source out required materials, labor for assembly, and production manu machinery to produce these pencils. And then number five, uh, they will enlist the use of an engineer uh, to ensure that costs achieve these target costs. And if they don't, then they know that this is not feasible. Uh, so then they know if they can't get their costs um, below 26 cents per pencil, well, then they know that then they'd have to either sell it for more than 40 cents or they know that they're not going to get their target operating profit. Okay, your turn. You work for a small Alberta-based oil producer. The price of Alberta oil is typically based on reference to other types of oil. For example, uh, WTI or West Texas Intermediate. And a perfect price to quality ratio is required for customers to buy the product. WTI has an expected average price for the upcoming year of $30 a barrel. And your oil patch will produce oil that is 10% lower in terms of quality than WTI. Further, you require a per unit income of $7 per barrel. What is your target cost? Is it A, $30, B, $27, C, $20, or D, $7? The market described has a perfect price to quality ratio. If your product is 10% lower in quality than the WTI benchmark and the benchmark price is $30 per barrel, that means that your target price is going to be at 90%. It's going to be equal to 90% times that $30 per barrel. So $27 per barrel. Then if you want to have an income, so you want to have your target income of $7 per barrel, that means that if you're going to sell it for $27, you want to attain a profit of seven, you have to keep your prices to $20 a barrel or less. So that is why C is your correct answer. All righty. I hope you're getting the hang of this. I hope it's kind of fun in the sense that you're getting to see strategy, um, marketing, quality, uh, and some qualitative aspects uh, combined into one. I have former students that um, work in banks in the credit um, de product development markets. Uh, I have used the strategies in this chapter myself for some uh, non nonprofit uh, consulting work, like these things are just versatile. And yes, nobody will come to you and say, excuse me, what is your target cost? Uh, or very likely not. But what they will do is come to you with a problem and you'll get to kind of identify the key case facts, the key um, determinables, and then come up with an answer to the problem. And one of those problems might just be in the realm of target, target costing. Alrighty, thank you, thank you. Uh, two more videos for this chapter, almost there, you're doing great, and I'll see you soon.